I would like to welcome you to the Laramie K Optician Works Training Center, where today, well, we've got kind of a messy hodgepodge going on. Way back in 2013, I hired a bunch of models and a professional photographer to assemble what I called the Frame Fit Photo Gallery. Now, 2013 was so long ago that one, it was a slideshow, and two, of course, it had all my old logos, none of the good Laramie K stuff in there. So it was time to kind of get things a little bit updated. Couldn't afford to have it reshot and do the whole thing from scratch quite yet. And I figured, hey, you know what? There's enough good material here that I wanted to share it with you. Super duper wicked important skill set to have when you can do what we're about to go through in about three seconds, greatly increases your value as an optician. You must be taught how to do this. You have to learn how to do this. And you must practice it. And I mean really practice it. What is it? It's looking at and looking for fit not fashion when looking at a frame. And it's a little harder than it sounds. Now, the best way to get good at this is playing the game, and that is talking with your coworkers. And when it's a little bit quiet, you grab 50 frames and you put on the most hideous, ugly stuff. You put women's on men's and men's on women, and you play the game. Does it fit? And that helps when you have to look beyond how the frame looks and you learn how to evaluate fit, your life's gonna be a whole lot easier. How do we do that? Well, we're about to run through the steps, which are one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, width, nose, temples, width, nose, temples. And we'll dig into that in just a second. It's 2020, we've got the COVID thing going on, and all you see on social media is, I had a customer come in and try on a 300 pairs of glasses. Well, if you learn how to do this and do it well, you can reduce that. You can go from that person trying on 25 to trying on five. Every time, no, of course, we all have exceptions, but if you do this well, you will greatly reduce the number of frames that people take off the board. If you have been in the opticianry game for a little while now, you probably have noticed that people come in all different sizes. You've got your little peanut heads all the way up to your pumpkin heads. And yes, those are medically recognized anatomical terms from the Journal of the American Medical Association. The textbook definition for the proper width of a frame is this, and I'll get out of the way and read that. The temple leaves the frame front. It goes straight back and only touches the face where it meets the ear. Now, as old school textbooky definitions go, this is a really good one and certainly one that you may see pop up on exams and such. What does that mean? Well, just simply exactly that. If these are your temples, you want them going straight back from the frame front and touching just before the ear. Let's dig into that just a little bit more. Now, why do we look at width first? Well, because it is just so incredibly easy. 
Customer goes over, takes something off the board, puts it on, you can tell in just an instant, one quick glance, does it fit or not? If it doesn't, there's no reason to look at the nose, there's no reason to get up close and personal and look behind their ears for temple length. It's a quick triage, yes, no. Does the frame look like this? It's a no. Does it look like this? It's a no. Does it look like this? Yes. Now we can continue on with the process. This is what you never want to see. This is what happens when we try to squeeze a child's frame onto a girl ready for a tween size. See how the temples angle out? That frame is much too small for her. This is a great image. If you look close, you can see that the spring hinge is open. This means that the frame is too small for her. A spring hinge has nothing to do with fit. This is what too wide looks like. The yellow arrows are where the temple should be. The red lines are where the temples are. Notice the large gap between her face and the temples. Here it cannot be clearer. The yellow lines highlight the temples. The light blue lines are where they should be. This frame is too big for her. If you have been in the opticianry game for a little while, you probably have also noticed that noses come in all different sizes. On one end of the scale, you got your petite little buttons, and on the other, you got your great big old schnoz. And yes, those are two more medical terms that you will need to memorize. Because you've got a sliding scale of buttons to schnozes, it is not, it is never a case of one size fits all. So the second thing in our triage that we look at when we're looking at frame fit over fashion is how that frame fits on that customer's nose. How do we do that? We look. We look at it very closely and we look at it from a few different angles. Now this is definitely close enough that you're, you're, you're right on the edge of personal space just getting into it. In fact, I would say it wouldn't be rare once in a while for have someone actually say like, what are you doing? Um, that's how close you need to take a moment and really look at the fit of how that frame is sitting on their nose. Most of the time you can pick it up just during your normal conversation that you're having with your customer. It really kind of breaks down to four basic concepts. If you have a big schnoz, big nose, you need a wide bridge. A button, a narrow, you need a narrow bridge. Just realized I'm tossing around a term bridge and not everybody knows what I'm talking about, so let's cover that. In the simplest terms possible, the bridge is the piece that connects the two eye wires or two lenses together. You can think of it as the distance between the two lenses if you want for simplicity's sake. It kind of sort of goes without saying that if you've got a great big nose, well, you want a pretty wide bridge. You want the distance here to be pretty good. If you have a tiny, thin, little bridge, not much going on there, then you want a narrow bridge. Now, a bridge is not something that can be adjusted after the fact, so it's a really crucial piece to getting a properly fitting frame. Right? Right. If you have a very flat nose, a very flat bridge, then you generally want a frame with nose pads so you can lay those flat, put some silicone on there and have that frame grab a little bit. And then you've got your entire category of plastic frames and those simply must match shape to shape. Let's take a look at that. What you're looking for is always the maximum contact. It should look as if that frame were made specifically for that person. That's kind of as, as close, that perfect match that you're looking for. What a bad plastic frame fit looks like. See how the frame is resting on just two points? This will quickly become uncomfortable for her to wear. Image is a little bit hard to see, but basically what you have going on there is this. You've got a frame with a sharp corner, and instead of resting on the bridge, instead of spreading that weight in the frame over the entire curvature of her nose, it is literally digging in at a corner, digging in at a corner, and it would probably be comfortable uh, for about 30 seconds. Here is what a great plastic frame fit should look like. See how the frame shape matches her nose perfectly. Here is a compromised fit. It is not perfect, but it would do fine for a backup pair. 
it has a little too much of a gap over her bridge. This is what happens when a bridge is too wide. Notice that the frame is actually resting on the crest of my nose. If I went and jammed the nose pads over to make up for it, well, the fit would end up looking pretty silly. Now I know those images aren't the easiest to see, so let me pull that one out. That bridge is literally resting on top of my nose. I have no contact here on the side. The nose pads are not touching. I don't have touch on my cheek. It's a metal frame, so I'm relying on the nose pads. And what instead, I've literally got the bridge resting on my nose. That would be comfortable for about 30 seconds. Let's talk about nose pads and guard arms for just a few moments. Assuming that your bridge size is correct, nose pads allow for small adjustments to fit and appearance. You cannot bend your way out of a bad choice. You, you just simply can't do that. If you choose the wrong bridge size, you can't bend the guard arms enough to make that look right. Adjustments for nose pads, what you're looking at when you're looking at that customer doing your triage is it's really simple. Okay, you're just looking for maximum contact, the exact same concept as a plastic frame. We're talking about humans here. So I know for a while there's all kinds of silly stuff about splay angle and frontal angle and degrees. What a, what a bunch of nonsense where humans just simply go for maximum contact between the pad mimic the shape and the angles and the look of the nose with the pads. That's what you get your pliers for, adjust them so they fit well. You're not looking for any sharp angles, no gaps, just a nice, comfortable looking fit. Get the idea, right good, left bad. There we go, just get maximum contact. Now, many manufacturers are coming up with plastic frames with nose pads. There's an example right there. Um, look for things like global fit, Asian fit. And if you find a good optician, a competent optician, you could probably have him or her put a set of nose pads on a plastic frame. There's a video on how you do that. There are also specialty bridges on metals and special pads that you can buy, etc. But number three in our three part session of triaging frame fit over frame fashion is temple length. Temple lengths for a child generally run maybe around 125 millimeters. Your average adult 140, 145 is what you're going to find on frames. And your big guy frames may run all the way out to 160 millimeters. Now, why is temple length the third in our series? Well, because it goes beyond personal space and into touching. All right, super pet peeve back from the teaching days. As one of my old workmates used to say, you know what? you don't have an eye on the end of your finger. So the only way to find out if a temple is long enough is literally to turn that person's head, lift their hair up out of the way, bend their ear back, and actually look at the length of that temple. There is no other way. You can't, you can't do one of these. Oh yeah, okay, <laughs> it doesn't work guys, all right? You have to look, it's the only way possible. Right, uh, so you know, just take a just do it attitude. You might even want to practice a little bit, reaching back, grabbing somebody's hair, pulling it out, and looking behind their ear. What are you looking for for temple length? Well, the simplest way of thinking about it is you're looking for that temple in the tip of it to end about two thirds of the way behind and beyond the top of the ear. There are a couple of pictures for you. Um, the Wow, that's a really great one. Actually isn't all that great, I've realized. It's actually probably about a quarter of an inch too long. I've got a bunch of other examples on this. I go into it more and I've got some more pictures on the Optician Works website. This temple is much too short. It's not gonna reach the mastoid bump and they were probably going to slide. This temple is much too long. It'll be annoying, catch her hair, and it kind of looks bad. This is not unusual in kids and tweens and many temples can be trimmed for fit by a competent optician. I would call that a good fit. I don't know that I would say great, but that's pretty much what you want to see. 
A little other stuff. Uh, remember, this was assembled originally for consumers far more than opticians. Uh, this is actually part of our consumer's guide to buying eyewear. There's a whole lot more to this, of course. Also see all the great stuff at opticianworks.com where we dig into this much, much more. The three other things that I want to share with consumers is they always have to know if there's enough room for a progressive lens to work. As a rule, to work properly, a progressive lens needs 18 millimeters or more from the center of your pupil to the bottom of the lens. Don't say I didn't warn you. All right, super important and worth digging into just a little bit more. We have a couple of videos that explain this in much greater detail. It's far more complicated than this, but a progressive lens to work properly needs about 18 millimeters from the center of your pupil down to the bottom of the frame. You've got your near, you've got your tiny little corridor, you've got your distance. For all of that to work, you need about 18 millimeters. If you just bought a pair of progressives and you look in the mirror and the center of your pupil to the bottom of the frame is 12, that's probably why they don't work. Now, the, this is super, super crucial here. Every single frame is going to fit different on every single individual, right? We're like snowflakes. Every one of us is different. Every single one of us is going to have a slightly different width to their bridge, different length from forehead to the nose center. Everything is going to be different. Every time you put that frame on someone, this is going to move. It might be 18, 17, 16, 15, 20. It could be anything. That is why you really need a human to look at this to decide whether it's going to work for a progressive. One of the reasons that buying progressives from an online place is not really such a great idea. We have to question if the frame is not level, I put it on, I look and it's crooked, can it be adjusted? Remember, if you've got a giant hunking plastic frame like this, huge, big, wide temple, you can't adjust that unless you file this and then bend. It's going to be a really difficult job. That person is pretty asymmetric. Whereas if I have a nice thin little metal frame, I can bend the living heck out of it and push that frame up where I need it. So be careful on that. Don't tell anyone, but my one ear is actually much lower than the other. When I put on a frame that is in perfect alignment, well, I look like this. With some adjustment, okay, a lot of adjustment, I can get a frame to sit level on my face. Most opticians will use your eyebrows as a guide. What do I mean when I say that most opticians use your eyebrows? Well, that's exactly what I mean. When we look at a frame, we look at the top of the eye wire, the top of the eye wire, we look at your eyebrows and we look at the relationship between those. We want those to be level all the way across. If they aren't, then we start bending our frame to bring this one up or this one down. So the distance here and here is equal. So if your eyebrows are drawn on crooked, it might be the reason why your glasses look crooked. And the last is we do sometimes have to consider if a person puts on the glasses and they immediately say, my eyelashes are brushing the back of the lens, which must be really uncomfortable. We have to consider that as well. If you have long eyelashes, you will need to be careful in choosing a frame. If they touch with the demo lenses, it will only get worse with your prescription. Look for a frame with adjustable nose pads. A competent optician can usually adjust the frame, and lenses can also be cut so that they are placed further out. Thank you so much for watching. If you're watching me on YouTube, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Watching us on Facebook, please do give us a like. It helps us out. Make sure that every lens that goes into a frame that you are going to pay attention to how it fits comes from Laramie K. And I will probably not see you next week. I am taking a vacation. I will see you the following one.